Well, good morning once again as we gather this day. Thank you for breathing deep with one another. It's important in the life of our time together to focus on who we are and how we are to serve and sharing sharing in this moment, although distant, either by phone or on YouTube, by breathing together, we know that we are connected not only with one another, but with our God. As we gather this day, let us gather hearts and minds in prayer. A holy and living God, we ask you to be in our presence this day and to center us on your will and work for the world so that who we are and how we live together as one is evident in our shared ministry, and life together. Amen. This morning we are focusing on feeling pain. The very thing that many of us try to avoid day in, day out is feeling pain. This uh, idea of entering into the story of Jesus and finding a way to navigate and negotiate the pain being felt. Uh, So let me invite us to our scripture text this day. Our scripture text this day comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 38b and uh, through 19. Uh, Chapter 19, verse 16. So I invite you now to to see and sense and hear maybe all over again uh, what it means to be in that moment when Jesus focuses on his conversation with Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? After he had said this, he went to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, no, this man, but not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, the king of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said it to him, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power, the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you have no power over me unless it has been given, for me, given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man... You are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Great Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, should I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In so many ways, we can place ourselves here at this mock trial of Jesus, this confrontation with Pilate, where Pilate is navigating and negotiating for this life of this one and maybe even navigating and negotiating for his own political life. In many ways, Christians believe in the reality of pain. There is, in the second movement of the Apostles' Creed, we proclaim our faith about Jesus and the suffering of the hands of Pontius Pilate. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. This suffering challenges my own understanding of Jesus' response to earthly power. To me, Jesus experienced pain. Pain, but Jesus did not suffer. I heard it once said, pain is inevitable and suffering is optional. Remember again the non-emotive way the gospel writer John describes the events that unfold at Jesus' trial and the subsequent torture that there was, to me, excruciating pain, horrific as a matter of fact. Yet Jesus stands receiving the scourge of the crowd and the vitriol of the moment, and there is no outward suffering in the face of those who would ultimately take his life. Yes, he experienced pain, but what of suffering? He answers only one of the of Pilate's questions. It is the question of power. Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you, Pilate asks. Jesus knows it is God who ultimately saves and the body they might kill, but no one can take away what is within. What is the last line of a mighty fortress is our God, the, the lines penned by reformer Martin Luther? That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth the spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Barbara Brown Taylor, in her book, Altar in the World, helps us to understand maybe a little more closely what it means to touch pain. As a, an Episcopalian priest and one who, one who has seen darkness herself, she says, pain is provocative. Pain pushes people to the edge. Pain brings out the best in people along with the worst. Pain strips away all illusions required to maintain the status quo. Pain begs for change. But suffering, Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor says, happens in the mind. The mind decides what pain means and whether it is deserved. The mind notices who comes to visit and who does not. The mind remembers how good things used to be and are not likely to be again. The mind makes judgments, measures loss, takes blame, and assigns guilt. Suffering is in the mind. Pain they may inflict, but suffering is in the mind. What I was reminded of this week, especially in my reading um, in advance of Holy Week next week, I was reminded that the only reliable wisdom about pain comes from those who suffer from it. The only reliable wisdom about pain comes from those who suffer from it. As we think about our work as 
those who uh, are at the front lines of racial reconciliation and justice. We are called to step into the gap, to speak words that may respond to the pain whole communities might feel. And also, in my case, as a white cisgender male, I must also speak into the generational ignorance of white supremacy and also speak truth to white fragility. This last week, I was invited to testify before the uh, Texas State House regarding monuments, Confederate monuments here in Dallas. And I just want to read you a portion of the pain I feel, <laughs> uh, or I'm sensing, not feel, but the pain I, uh, I'm sensing as part of our common work together. Here's what I said on Tuesday. As a minister, I know the importance of symbols and their power. I know how symbols carry significant meaning, not just for the past, but how these symbols carry meaning in the present and cast a vision for our future. The fragility of white citizens' ideology at the end of the Civil War and into the early and mid-20th century raised these symbols representing years of perceived greatness. Today, given our current political climate in the United States, I am concerned about the ideology of looking backwards. This is the very same ideology that elevated these statues to prominence. In my congregation, we are well aware of our action and our inaction. When our voices are being raised and we are becoming more aware of the interpretation of our collective silence on issues that matter. It is time to face the fragility of white supremacy, bringing to bear a full and robust conversation with those who by our collective action and our selective silence have deemed citizens as second class. We need to work together to create Dallas and Texas as a more compassionate and truthful, faithful place for all of our beloved citizens. Dear friends, the pain just about changing a mindset, about radical inclusion, about what it means to lift those who have been voiceless, ignored, oppressed, depressed, exploited, and marginalized, it is time to awaken ourselves to the pain of those who are around us. Maybe, just maybe, that's why Pontius Pilate went back and forth from Jesus to those who brought him in. He was trying to wrangle the pain, trying to stay distracted from the pain he felt, the challenging, as I mentioned before, mock trial. But let's stay with the pain this week. The pain of exclusion, of marginalization. Stay with that pain this week. Deepen your feeling to it. Not just intellectualizing the pain, but feel that pain. For we may just discover that our lives have full meaning when we enter into that kind of hurt. Pilate asks at the very beginning of our text this day, what is truth? I believe truth is found behind the hurt we may just feel. Let us pray. Oh, God bless our pain. Help us to stay with the pain, but not to let it linger in the suffering. For we have the privilege to know how this story ends. It ends flipping the script. It ends with resurrection. It ends 
with knowing that death has happened and that life abounds. God, there are deaths that are among us in our culture and in our life together. Help us to rise to action, to raise our voices, and to speak into the pain of those who are marginalized and oppressed. And as I remember this week, a theologian who has made an incredible impact on my life and my work, Ignacio Elacuria of El Salvador, where he reminds us that there is no salvation outside of the poor. There's no salvation outside of those who are in pain and oppressed. Oh God, as we have focused on this one named Jesus, who is one with the oppressed and the poor, who is one marginalized by systems and structures and power. Let us remind ourselves that feeling pain may just help us to fully realize that salvation happens through the poor. May we become poor all over again, not attaching ourselves to pain, but instead embracing, embracing the life that is to come. God, heal our every ill. Be the light for our tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. We pray these things in the one whose life, whose death, whose resurrection rings true in and through us. Amen. May God bless you and keep you this day as you enter into this weekend of Palm Passion Sunday and into next week's Holy Week. I pray that the pain that you might experience may be the teacher that you've longed to have on your life's journey. God bless you, and we'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye.